This is a, one of those concerts where nothing really matches, but hopefully the contrasts are what people remember. We start with one of the four overtures Beethoven wrote for his soul opera Fidelio. Then we follow that with a, an extraordinary violin concerto by Bela Bartok. And then we end with a very uh, backwards looking symphony by Franz Schubert. There are three Leonore overtures and there's a fourth overture called the Fidelio Overture. And um, I wanted to put all four of them on this season because I'm, I'm rather obsessed with his obsession. He worked so hard at this one opera. Uh, it, it came to be known originally as Leonora, named after the heroine of the opera. Then it went through a series of rewrites and eventually it came to be known as Fidelio, which is the assumed, um, the assumed name of this heroine. She, she puts on the disguise of a man named Fidelio to try to rescue and release her husband from false imprisonment. And uh, Beethoven, uh, he struggled so mightily with the overture to this opera that, uh, as I mentioned, he wrote th four different overtures. And to make it even more complicated, we're going to play on this program the overture called Leonore Overture Number no. One. But it was the third attempt to write a Leonore Overture. He, he withdrew this piece and stuck it in a drawer and it didn't get published until very, very late in his life, which is why it was called number one. It's a con I know it doesn't make much sense, but trust me on this. It was his third attempt to write an overture to this opera. Well, he came from Hungary and um, was initially a composer drunken with the sounds of Wagner. Uh, a lot of his early pieces are sort of cloaked in that sort of Germanic uh, chromatic style of writing and Richard Strauss sort of tone poem writing. But the more Bartok dug into the folk heritage of his country, he used to go out into the countryside with a very primitive recording machine. It was, I think, a, a 78 kind of recorder, or maybe cylinder, I can't recall. But he used to go to the various little villages in the countryside and, and ask people to just sing into the horn their favorite one or two folk songs. And he accumulated hundreds of these recordings. And I think all of that work created in him a national fervor. So he, he tried to incorporate, if not uh, literal quotations of folk melodies, things that's, uh, melodies that sounded like they could be folk melodies into his classical music. Schubert was an extraordinarily gifted composer, um, one of the greatest melodists that classical music has ever seen. And at the time he wrote his Fifth Symphony, he was going through uh, an infatuation with Mozart. So this particular symphony is about the length of a Mozart symphony. And it's written for, I would say, a smallish chamber orchestra. There are no clarinets employed in this piece. There are no trumpets. There are no timpani. So it has more of a, an intimate sound, lacking all that brass and drum power, I'd say. And the melodies in the symphony are very Mozartian. They're sort of clean, they're suave, and they have a certain classical feel to it. And the whole symphony has that feel to it. If there's any one movement that sounds very, very much like Schubert, I would say it's the second movement, which starts with a, a song like uh, melody and it's put through its paces in a very dramatic way. It's a long movement, but again, he doesn't stray too far from Mozart in this piece. Mm -hmm. 